It is Resurrection Sunday morning and welcome to Clearview Church. We are so glad you're here. We have so much to celebrate. On Friday, we remembered what Jesus did on the cross and today we celebrate that our Lord is alive and risen. He is seated at the right hand of the throne, interceding on behalf of you and me. He is worthy to be praised and we are so glad that we can gather together today and worship him. Now stand up on your feet and let us worship the Lord together. What's up church? We're so glad you're joining us today. Come on, let's all worship our God together. Yo 
burden for too long on my own and I wasn't created to bear it alone I hear your invitation to let it all go and I see it now I'm laying it down And I know that I need you I run to the Father Fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again Happy Easter, Clearview Church. It is so good to celebrate Resurrection Sunday with you. We had a great time, uh, Good Friday, celebrating and reflecting on the cross. But today we celebrate with joy. We celebrate from a position of victory and triumph. And 
uh, today as we get to the Word of God together, as we, as we get into the challenge for us today, as we remember the last several weeks of being driven by eternity and the grace of God that carries us into the life that we live and the power of our experience transforming our lives and, and allowing it to transform others, being a conduit and not a container. I'm so excited to celebrate with you today. We're gonna, we've got a message today called When Life feels out of control. Over this past year, I'd say that it's pretty significant that we've all felt a little out of control, but is control really what we felt out of? Is it, is it the things that we feel like we can control, we're out of control, and what does that look like? And I just want to encourage all of us today is as we look at the scripture today, we'll be in Matthew chapter 26, verses 38 to 40. A few simple scriptures we're going to break down this Easter Sunday together, this Resurrection Sunday together. And as we look at the, the Word of God together and we break it down and we look at it from the perspective of when life is out of control, uh, let us be reminded that God is always in control. Amen. So let's go before the Lord in prayer before we get into His Word today. Heavenly Father, I pray right now, Lord, we yield the rest of this service to you, this message to you. And God, I thank you that even when I feel like everything is out of control, Lord, you are fully in control. You have a plan. Your plan is good, and we trust that plan. Your word says that you have a purpose for us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope for a future. Your word says that, and it is not dictated by circumstances, by control, by chaos. Lord, we thank you that you are a faithful God in the storm and outside of the storm. And so, God, as we go into your word today and as we study and as we evaluate our lives, God, to reflect back on the goodness that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross to be our Savior so that we could have eternal life with you. God, I just pray over your people right now that our hearts and our minds would be open to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Matthew 26, verses 38 to 40 is the group that we're going to be reading through today and studying and talking about when life feels out of control. This is Jesus, it says, verse 38, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further... He fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. I'm going to read that again. Jesus says these words to his disciples and he goes a little further and he prays. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Verse 39, Going a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Let that be the prayer of every one of us today. Whether you're online only, you're in person, whether you're still a little worried about the stand of, of the pandemic and, and, and all the different things that surround us today beyond the pandemic, I want to encourage you today that when life feels out of control, God is fully in control. Okay, God yields to us free will, but God has a plan and a purpose for redemption of all things. But I want to share with us in this perspective that control is an illusion. The illusion of control is this, the cognitive bias that leads us to believe we have control over the outcome when in reality we don't. It's the cognitive bias. It's our brain's way of saying we can control the outcome of something when in reality we don't. Think, let's apply this into a sports thing. All right, there are two teams battling against one another. Neither team really wants to lose. So both teams are gonna do their best 
with what they can do to beat the other team. If it's basketball, they want to score more points than the other team. And their goal is to put up more points and have more rebounds, more steals, and more assists and not give up the ball as much. And their goal, but can they guarantee that they're going to put up more points on the board than the other team? No, they can't. There are going to be certain things that are outside of their control. They cannot fully control the result of the game. They can just do their best and hope that that's good enough to beat the other team. All right. In life, we have a lot of circumstances and situations where we face them and we face them and we try to manipulate them and control them into what we feel should be the best result in the end. But at the end, we really need to do our best, right? We've heard it said, pray and do like it's 100% on you and, and, and pray like it's 100% on God. Do like it's 100% on you and pray like it's 100% on God and allow God to grace the reality that we don't control the outcome, but rather God does and we yield it to him. Now, that's not also to say, here's the thing. If you have a garden and you don't water your garden and it doesn't rain on your garden, your plants aren't going to grow. The sun is going to dry them up, they're going to die, and they won't produce fruit or a crop, whatever you plant. So there's, you got to do your part and you got to pray for God to do his part. And that balance in between is you doing everything that you can and surrendering the outcome. You can't control the outcome. You can't guarantee the outcome. The illusion of control is the cognitive bias that leads us to believe that we have control over the outcome when in reality we don't. What Jesus is saying in this prayer is, Father, if there's any way for you to redeem humanity, let me fill this cup for you. If there's any way for you to redeem humanity in any other possible way to draw them back in relationship with us, let it be so. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26, verse 42 says this. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. So think about it. Jesus just doesn't go once and say, Lord, your will, not mine. All good. I'm out. Verse 42 he went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Again, he's saying, if there's any other way for humanity to be redeemed, let it be so, but I'll drink it if it's your will. I'll follow through. I'll be obedient. But man, if there's any other way, God that you can, you can do this. Let, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, here's the reality. You don't always have the power to control, but you always have the power to surrender. You don't always have the power to control where something goes or what something does or how something turns out in your life, but you always have the power of taking those things in your hand and being a conduit for the Lord and surrendering them to Him. You see, part of that conduit of God flowing through us is us giving back to him and surrendering to him our plans for his purpose. We say it often around Clearview, we want to put up our preferences for God's purpose because God's purpose is the best thing for our life. We can make the plans and the preferences all we want and all we have for the life that we want to leave lead and the legacy we want to leave. But in reality, the best thing for us to possibly do is simply say, Lord, not as I will, but as you will. On earth as it is in heaven, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. It's a prayer Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 6. Let us never forget to be a body of believers as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, the pinnacle for the body of believers that allows us to have eternal life with God, right? The, the, the Bible says that how, mu how are we going to be saved? If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, you're saved. It's that simple. So we need to believe in our heart and celebrate Resurrection Sunday because it's the place where freedom is found. But when life feels out of control, you have to remember that you don't always have the power to control things. 
As a matter of fact, sometimes when we try to control things, we put too much pressure on them and we break them. Or we try to control things and we try to keep things from going all out. I, I challenge you to do this. All right, go to the sink and let the water run and hold your hands out like this and try to keep the water from flowing into your drain. Don't plug the drain, okay? There's a way around it, I get it. But in your hands, try and stop all of the water from flowing down the sink and down your drain. You can't do it. You can't always control the water where it goes. You can't always control everything in life, but you can surrender it. And for me, the way that you would surrender it is you put that plug in there. But what happens when you put that plug in there? Eventually it's going to overflow. So the real way is surrendering it is just allowing it to go through your pipes and make its way out. So I want to encourage you today that you don't always have the power to control, but you do always have the power to surrender. And in those moments where control becomes something that you get so frustrated with and you have it in your hands, remember it is better in God's hands than it is in your hands. Number one, God's will is rarely easy, but it's always good. God's will is rarely easy, but it's always good. Over the past four weeks, we've been on a journey driven by eternity, and it is the driving force for how we are to operate is in view of eternity, that we live in this temporary body, but we've got a soul destined for eternity, and so does everybody else. And it's by the grace of God that we have the ability to share the truth with other people and love them the way that Jesus loved us. For the church to grow, for the kingdom to advance, people who've experienced grace need to help other people who haven't experienced grace experience the grace and love of Jesus Christ. The one who gave up his life on a cross and overcame the grave for who the Son has set free, he is free indeed. God's will is rarely easy, but it's always good. Even Jesus struggled with this in that prayer in the garden. God, Father, I'm grieving even until death right now. Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. It's not always easy. God's will is rarely easy, but it's always good. For we are God's handiwork, and God has prepared good works for us to do. We, we read it a lot over the last four weeks of the fact that God is good, and His works are good, and God has prepared a good plan for our lives, and those plans that He has for us are to prosper us and not to harm us, plans for hope and a future. When life seems out of control, sometimes it's going to feel a little hopeless. But maybe that's that moment where you remember that He is our hope. He is the anchor for our soul. He is the fortress that we go running into. He is the cornerstone that holds the whole house together. The question is this. What are you trying to control that you need to surrender? Take a moment of self-reflection. Take a moment to recalibrate what's going on in life, what feels out of control, and what are the things that you're trying to control that you really need to surrender to the Lord, that you really need to, you need to go on a little further. You need to have your circle and say, hey, keep praying over me. Go on a little further, fall on your face before the Lord and say, God, I need your help with this. Maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's parenting, maybe it's your job, maybe it's a, a, a relationship with a sibling or, or a family member. Maybe it's that you're struggling with addiction. Maybe there's all kinds of things that we can be going to the Lord with that we can be trying to control that are out of our control. And the greatest thing that we could do is surrender them. So what are the things that you're trying to control that you need to surrender? Matthew 26, 39 says this. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. We've heard that scripture a bunch. He says it more than once. Real faith, point number two. Real faith starts between the if and the nevertheless. 
I preached this last year. Let us be nevertheless Christians. Nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. Let us surrender to the authority of God and be okay with the outcome. Because the outcome of being in the will of God is the best place for your marriage. It's the best place for your parenting. It's the best place for your children. It's the best place for your relationships. It's the best place for your job. It's the best place for your resource. Being in the will of God is the best place you could possibly be. I thank God that Jesus didn't step off the cross and heal himself, but rather Jesus died a sinner's death, fulfilling the prophecy of the Old Testament as the Messiah. And then he overcame the grave, and he's alive today, living and active in our lives. He is the Word of God. He is strength. He is peace. He is hope. And the Holy Spirit that God sent to us as a gift to empower us to be his witnesses, strengthens us daily, and God will add to our numbers daily as we pursue him to love people to Jesus. Real faith starts between the if and the nevertheless. Going a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible. Right? He's surrendering it. Think about this. The if and the then, uh, the if and the nevertheless are both surrendering. If it is possible, God, I surrender it to you. If it's possible, Father, to let this cup pass from me. Not, don't, don't let this happen, right? We often even try and control things with our prayers, making demands of the Lord. But if it's possible, God, if it's possible, Father, real faith starts between the if and the nevertheless. If it's possible, I surrender this to you. But nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Real faith starts between the if and the nevertheless, as example by Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 10, 39. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Matthew 10, 39. If you, give, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, You'll find it. If you try to hold on to the temporary things here on the earth and we don't live in view of eternity, we're going to forfeit eternity. If we become so consumed with temporary consumerism, instead of being driven by eternal contribution, well, consumerism means I get to receive. Well, contribution means I get to give. And here's what I know. I can't reap what I don't sow. If I'm so focused on what I can attain here on earth, I'm going to forfeit some things in heaven. But if I'm focused on eternal contribution, that means I'm focused on sowing things into eternity. What do we sow into eternity? People. Lives. What do the harvesters get rewarded for? The harvesters get rewarded for people entering into an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you cling to your life, this one that you experience here on earth, this body one day will get laid to rest and your soul has an eternal destination, either in hell separate from Jesus and, and Father or in eternity in the presence of Almighty God, worshiping Jesus with the saints. That's the choice. That's what you're building. That's the life you're building. Those are the decisions you're making. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life, if I give up the temporary consumerism and status of things here on the earth for eternal contribution and I shift the way that I operate my resources, the, the people in my lives, the gifts, the talents, the abilities, the finances, and the things God's resourced in my life, and I switch it over into eternal contribution, I'm sowing and building the kingdom of God. And guess what? I don't have to buy it. I'm simply going to reap what I've sown. I give and I receive. I buy, I spend, I lose. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Number three, and our final point for today, this Easter, God can do way more with your surrender than he can do with your control. God can do way more with your surrender than he can do with your control. The greatest place for you to put the problems of your life, the victories of your life, your entire life is in the hands of God. Think about this. 
I have finite abilities. I'm on a stage. I'm speaking to you. I'm in a building. I can't see outside. I can't do outside. Yet God is all powerful. He is all present and he is all knowing. So when I take my concerns and I hold them in my hands, the only place that these can be is that, is that <clears throat> Clearview Church on Royalton Road on the corner of 82 and Boone inside the sanctuary on the stage at a table with my hand speaking to you. But when I take my resource, the things I steward, and I give them to the Lord, the gifts, talents, abilities, relationships, finances, when I take all that I am and I surrender it to Him, Guess what? It can carry beyond this water bottle. It carries beyond this table, beyond this stage, beyond this building, beyond this property, because I'm taking everything I have and giving it to Him. And when I surrender the things that I feel is out of control, the things that I'm struggling with that are out of control, it's amazing what God can do when I surrender them to Him. You see, because God has a plan. His plan is good, and you trust that plan. God can do way more with your surrender than He can do with your control. Because when you surrender to Him, it takes the things that you're trying to control, and it gives the power of God, the all-knowing, all-powerful, and present everywhere God, the ability to work in your life. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and created in the image of God. And because of Jesus, you have the opportunity for a relationship with God. And because of Jesus dying on a cross and overcoming the grave, Heavenly Father sent Holy Spirit to empower you to live this life, a fruitful life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give life and life to the full. I don't know about you, but I want to live the fullest life I can here on earth by filling heaven. I want to take the resources that I have, the situations I have, the struggles I have, the victories I have, and I want to surrender them because God can do far more with my surrender than he can do with my control. Because when I'm trying to control it, he can't have his hands on it. But man, when I surrender it to him, he can do it. When I sow into building his kingdom and seeing lives come to Jesus, when I, when I invite people to church, when I love on people in our community, when I love just because he first loved me, it changes the world around us because people don't just love people anymore. They don't just care for people anymore. They don't go out of their way anymore. It baffles me every time I hold the door open for somebody how shocked they are that somebody would look for somebody behind them to open a door to go into a store. That's the kind of world we live in. Let us shine the light of Jesus Christ everywhere we go through simple gestures, simple acts, and let us surrender the things that feel out of control because you're carrying a burden that wasn't meant for you to carry. Let us be reminded that God's will, God's will is rarely easy, but it's always good. Real faith starts between the if and the nevertheless. If the current circumstances can change God, that's awesome. But if I've got to live through this to grow in my relationship with you, nevertheless, your will be done. And God can do far more. God can do way more with your surrender than he can with your control. Let us be a body of believers, remembering the cross and the empty tomb in a life that surrenders to the authority of God because when we make ourselves available, it says, Jesus says to his disciples when he gathers with them up on the mountainside as he returns, and he says, all authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Now go and make disciples of all nations. When we're not consumed with the things that are out of control, we can operate in the things that he does control, and we can be who he's called us to be. Matthew 6, he talks about, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough worry of its own. So focus on today. So I want to encourage you, if life has felt out of control for you, you need to surrender it to Jesus. Take your emotions out of it, take your process out of it, and just say, God, I need you to work in this. And if that means 
that he's got to work in your emotions, that's great. But take out all of your bias, all of your preference, all of your cognitive bias that you can control the outcome and step into reality that the best place that you can be is not in control at all, but totally surrendered to the will of God for your life. While it is rarely easy, it is always good. That faith journey, it starts between praying, if the circumstances that I think need to change can change, and nevertheless, your will be done. And God will always do more and can do more when you surrender to him instead of try to control. Let me pray over you today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you this Resurrection Sunday that we celebrate that He is risen. Christ is alive. The Holy Spirit is empowering us today to be your church, to go and make disciples, to go and grow, to reach our community, to love people to your Son, Jesus, and to experience light in the darkness, hope to the hopeless. God, I pray over your people that we'd be encouraged, uplifted, and empowered, and challenged to grow in your word and to grow in relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.